Welcome back to another episode of The Shack Show. And in this episode of The Shack Show, I'm going to be talking about fishing pencil poppers during the summer and what I look for in when I fish them. One of my favorite lures of all time to fish is pencil poppers. My, just from like a sheer aggressive bass standpoint, there's nothing more fun than watching bass fly out of the water to hit a pencil popper. There's so many different ways you can work pencils and they're so productive in many different areas uh, and pretty much all season long. You can get them in early spring to fall, but one of the more difficult times to really uh, use a pencil and be very productive with it that I feel like can be uh, very productive if utilized properly is during the summer. And uh, fishing pencils during the summer is one of those things that like I took, took me a while to really, really learn the nuances of why bass will be feeding on pencils versus spooks versus stuff that is subsurface. But one thing that pretty much remains the same for me is the fact that pencils tend to catch really big bass. I've caught some of my biggest bass ever on pencil poppers. They're just an unbelievable plug. But specifically during the summer, they can get those bass that are more finicky to come up and hit it. So one thing that I was told one time, and I, I didn't fully believe until I proved it to myself, was that pencil poppers catch bass that are by themselves where like a spook will catch bass where there's a school of fish and they have competition a pencil popper can raise a bass that's maybe by itself just swimming along it will get that bass to come up and hit so pencils vary in many different sizes colors shapes whatever but what i really like is a pencil that is between six and seven inches long so it's not that big and the reason for this being i think that when you're working a pencil where you're literally trying to get it to go like that across the surface of the water. When you're working a pencil like that uh, and it's throwing a lot of water, it will give off a bigger profile than it actually is to these bass. And I think a lot of the time, the bass don't really wanna take on something that is nine, 10 inches long. And so, or whoever, however long you th they believe it is. So if it is a nine, 10 inch long uh, pencil, it's gonna be, something that that bass is like, well, I don't know if I can even eat this thing, so I'm not even gonna try. Where if you have something that is seven inches long or is six inches long, it's gonna get that bass that, that may or may not hit a pencil, say, okay, that's easy for me to come up and eat because I'm a giant fish. And uh, it also is a big enough meal for me that you know it's gonna be worth expending the energy to come up and hit it. Now, obviously they don't say that to themselves, but that's kind of the the, things that those bass will naturally be t considering uh, just because they don't want to expend a ton of energy to try to eat something that's too, too big and they can't even eat. And they also don't want to expend a lot of energy to eat something that's so small that they're not going to get anything out of it. So fishing something that is in that mid, what I would say like the medium size range of pencils is something that I think is extremely important. 
The other thing that I've found is the years where the water temperatures during that, what I'm gonna call like midsummer time frame, where I would say is probably from July, well, I'd say maybe the last week of um, June to the first week of August is like summer fishing. You know what I mean? Like the water's really warm. Uh, that that's like the they're getting into these summer patterns where they're gonna hold up in basically the same areas depending on what the bait's doing and everything like that. So that's like summer fishing for me. And the thing that I found is like if you have bass that are setting up in the same area every day. It's just a matter of time before you figure out how to catch them. And in seasons past, where the water temperatures are cooler, I've absolutely wrecked them on pencils. Where in other seasons, it's been an all spook season because the waters are really warm. So that I logged that and I was looking at my log this past season and I had, a, we all had on Cape Ann, a really warm water year for summer fishing. And it was like, I caught a few decent bass on pencils, 32s to 38 inch bass on pencils. And I had a few low 40 and lost a couple big high 40 inch bass on spooks. And I'm like, why is it dramatically a spook season? And I was looking through all my variables and everything. And the only thing from the past five years that kind of stayed consistent was the fact that when the water temperatures were in that like 65 to 68 degree range, the the pencils were just crushing it. And when it was from like 68 to 70, 72, the, the bigger spooks and smaller spooks for that matter were, were crushing it. So you, I had this one line that was kind of staying the same throughout the whole, the whole time. And what I found was pencils during the summer when it's cooler water temperatures are very important. So that's what I ended up doing. I ended up I'm, I am going to continue to throw pencils when the water temperatures are cooler. So that's really a really important factor into all of this. Now, when it comes to working a pencil, there's two main ways that you can work a pencil that I think are probably the most productive ways. And I've talked about this in the past, but like you guys like me, I would say like, I think the most like average conventional way of working a pencil is to try to get it to go like this back and forth across the surface of the water and spray a lot of water as it's doing it, kicking it up, working it slowly across the surface of the water, but with a lot of action. Other guys will work it a little bit faster and have it snake like that across the surface of the water. And both are very productive. I know guys that out catch me 10 to one on pencils, snaking it through the water. And it's something that I don't do a lot of because I personally don't have a lot of confidence in. I started to do more of it when the water was warmer and I was having these bass that were kind of following the pencils, but not committing. And I was getting more and more hits and eats and stuff. So the two main ways that I would highly suggest working a pencil is working it back and forth. So it's thrashing across the surface of the water. You'll get these electric eats. It's so awesome when that happens or just snaking it back and forth across the surface of the water. And that's when you're going to have these bass inhale the plug. I mean, it's, it's extraordinary. Those are my two favorite ways to uh, work pencils. Uh, and I think during the summer, as I said, focusing on those places where there's cooler water temperatures. And my main area for that would be deep boulder fields, you know, where maybe it is not that deep where you are, but 10, 15 feet further out, it drops off, you know, 90 feet deep. That's where those cool currents are going to be sweeping along. The water's going to stay cool there. And those bass will be more willing to hit a pencil where like if you're fishing an area where there's like a, almost a mile of it being five to 10 feet deep, the water might be a little bit warmer and the bass might not be quite as into uh, hitting it. Uh, I like those like reefy boulder fields that we have on Cape Ann. They do fantastic for me. The bass will stage up in there and finding that cooler water is definitely key. So thank you guys so much for watching this video. Uh, it really helps me out if you like and subscribe and I'll see you next time.